You know, Ray, the Tiger Rising, I, I think this is one of these really, I don't want to say important, but really value-added family films where I remember when I was 10, 9 to 10 to 11, really worried about the own mortality of my, my parents. And can you just speak to the fact that how this story really, it, it is a family film, but it also deals with really deeper issues about how a child can process grief and, and overcome that and, and move forward. Greg, I can't tell you, uh, you nailed it right off the bat. Um, this is exactly what we were trying to do. You know, in the beginning, I, I, I told all the actors and I told all the, the crew, hey guys, uh, this film stars two 10 year old kids, but we're not making a kid's movie. We're making a family film it, because the themes in Kate's awesome book uh, just deal with universal themes. You know, we've, we all go through hurt and loss. And this is about getting through that and how we process it. Um, Kate uh, chose to tell the story through the eyes of a 10 year old child, you know, an imaginative 10 year old, you know, so which makes it, you know, great for us in a cinematic way. But yeah, I mean, everybody in the film is dealing with something, you know, uh, they're, Rob is dealing with the loss of his mom. And that for a 10 year old boy, that's, that's huge. Um, but even his her, uh, his father, Robert Sr., he's dealing with the loss of his wife and how he's handling it. And he's having a hard time connecting with his son through that, you know. Um, even uh, Sistine is dealing with the, uh, the, the divorce of her parents. And what you see there too is, and I love this about the story, is that um, Rob takes his hurt and he goes inward and he goes into his imagination and Sistine she just lashes out. She doesn't know how to process it. So she gets in fights. She's just, you know, a tornado. But she's not a bad kid. She's just dealing with something that she doesn't know how to deal with, you know. And you can even see it in the adults, too. Sistine, uh, uh, Willie May, you can tell, we, even though we don't really get into the specifics, you can tell she's lived a difficult life. And she's processing that the best way she can so yeah this is a universal story just as a filmmaker and also as an adult how did you collaborate with your two lead actors because as as a kid they're really processing a lot of emotions and they're they're actors they're professionals but they they're really seeing a lot of things unfold before them how how were you able to just kind of build that bridge with them and make them feel comfortable because they both give really nuanced performances in in this movie Oh, thank you. I got to tell you, um, working with Christian and Madeline was just such a joy because, yes, they are young actors. They are children that have just like this, you know, vibrant spirit about them. And yet they have the maturity of, of really seasoned actors. I remember just the first day in rehearsals, um, you know, just talking to them about what we were doing and, and like going through a scene. And I remember both of them sitting there in chairs and, you know, their feet don't hit the ground <laughs> in my office, you know. Uh, but after a while, I realized if I just speak to them like adult actors, they got it. They understood. They asked great questions. They processed it. And I, I was just so stunned how, uh, how seasoned, how mature they were as actors. You know, I talk to them the same way I would talk to Dennis or Queen, too. A lot of movies, they'll deal with flashbacks, and the flashbacks are sort of, I mean, for lack of a better word, they're, they're kind of throwaway and forgettable. But with your film, you, you cast Catherine McPhee, and I thought she was really wonderful as a mother. Can you just talk about not making these flashbacks an obligatory element to the narrative? You really brought a lot of life to the flashbacks, particularly with your casting of Catherine. Well, I got to tell you, um, that to me was one of the must-haves in the film the the believability of the audience that rob's mom was so wonderful to him that this was such a loss for him so we had to just see um their relationship we had to see their connection you know we had to believe their mutual love there so that when she's not there the audience can understand oh that's what he's missing you know, and even the same thing with um, uh, with Sam Trammell playing uh, Robert Sr. You know, um, 
the loss uh, of a wife is huge. So um, Catherine came in and we spoke about what was going on in the, in, in the film and what Carolyn represented. And she just, she just completely uh, embraced it and understood what we were going for. And she just brought it home. She was awesome. I think one of the, as I get older, I think one of the big myths is when you're a filmmaker, you're, you're going to make your film in your early twenties and then you're going to, you're just going to come burst right out of the cannon. But to me, as I get older, I realize there's something to be said about making your debut film or your first two films when you're in your forties or fifties, or because you have a lot of lived in life experience is that from as a storyteller? Do you take that POV as well with your film? And did, was it great that you were actually able to make this film at this time of your life, as opposed to when you were in your, you know, a, a lot younger? Are you saying I'm old, Greg? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm saying I'm old. I'm saying you're much younger than me. <laughs> no, can I tell you something? Um, I think you hit something there. I think um, I don't know if I could have made this film ten years ago. Well, no, I take that back. Um, you're right, though. A certain level of maturity for this kind of material is, is vital. Um, there's lots of little nuance in the story. I mean, and I think the trick with this is that it's such a simple story. You know, it's not a big story. There's not lots of moving parts. It's, a, it's just a few characters in a few days time. And there's lots to mine there. And so, yeah, we, that was something that I think... Um, a level of years is certainly helpful. Although I'll never admit it though. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of helpful, how much of a coup was it to, regarding the production design, getting that building, that motel and the neighboring, just the wilds out there? Was that was that a painstaking search because it just seemed really organic and it was a, it's a very important element to your film for it to work? Um, you're, you're dead right. We, we searched all over for our motel, our Kentucky Star Motel. Um, and, you know, it's like, I remember as a kid, like driving through the South, you know, with my parents on vacation. And, you know, you'd see these little roadside motels, you know, back then. And so we were looking for, you know, one of those. And a lot of them had been modernized. And this one was just sitting there. And we, I remember the day we pulled up, we all, <laughs> me and my production designer, our DP, we all went, Oh my God, book it now. <laughs> Matter of fact, the interesting thing too was that the original motel sign had a star on the top of it. It was no longer there, but um, we, we recreated it and put it back up. And uh, so much of the town went by and was like, oh my God, they're, they're going to do a movie there, you know? But, uh, but from a design standpoint, it, it, it's, it's its own character too, you know, which is something we were hoping for. Very, very, very obvious question, but for people who really want to make films, what was the key to getting such an amazing ensemble? Because top to bottom, just A-level talent in your narrative. And what, what, what kind of advice could you give? Is it just pretty much the material is draws? Is it as simple as that, the material? You know what? Um, I, I have to say, casting is, is, is easily the biggest part of what we what we do here, you know? And I, I think it, it fills so much of the role of, it, it just, I'm stumbling here, forgive me here. But uh, yeah, the casting of the characters was just the most important part of the whole thing. Um, I think the material spoke to a lot of people and it, it was also kind of discerning too, because some people would just see this as a small movie and go, okay, no, no, we're not doing that, you know? And they were like, well, they're not the right person to do this, you know? Uh, on the other hand, some people just completely understood what we were trying to uh, make and it spoke to them. I remember I originally, when I originally wrote the script, I thought of Queen Latifah immediately. She has been like my number one choice since the beginning of the whole uh, project. And after many years, when we finally got the script sent to her, she was going to read it for the weekend. I remember all of a sudden I was like, oh, my goodness. Queen Latifah is like this incredibly talented, multidimensional, powerful, successful entrepreneur. I'm asking her to play a maid. Oh, my God. She's going to just laugh us out of the park here, you know. Um, and instead... She came back and she said, no, I want to do this. Uh, it really speaks to me. It really, I remember 
Uh, she goes, I connected with Rob, she told me. And I was like, what? You know, she, she said that when she was a little girl, she was going through a lot and she was, you know, the quirky artist, you know? I was like, wow, I didn't see that coming at all, you know? So um, you just got to get the, the material to the right people and just keep pressing because it's hard. Maybe this is a question I should ask uh, my therapist, but why, why do films, when you say family films, why does it the themes hit adults seem to hit a lot of adults harder now as one gets older because when i was a kid i thought oh when i'm adult i'm i'm just going to leave my youth behind but it seems i i won't even revisit it as stand by me because i know at 50 it'll just tear me to pieces do you have a theory on why when people say family films that's really not a pejorative it's really it can really hit adults a lot harder actually than than kids well i think let's face it when we're children things make impressions on us that lasts for a long time, you know? And it's almost like, I mean, we even use the term comfort food. You know, why is it that meatloaf and mashed potatoes or, so, you know, or whatever is a comfort food for you just as like, oh yeah, you know, it, it because it, it connects us with our youth. It, it makes us remember great days long, you know, uh, way back when. And hurts stay with us a long time too. And so, yeah, there's a lot going on in a simple story here, but Kate just gave us just a great palette to work with here. So we just, uh, we just, we try to be really respectful to all those layers, you know. Ray, my final question to you is I asked filmmakers and actors to name one of their all time favorite movies. And what is it about the specific film that still resonates with you today? Wow. Okay. Um, one of my all-time favorite movies, uh, probably easily, is When Harry Met Sally. <laughs> um, I think what speaks to me about that is friendship in a relationship. And I think uh, being best friends is vital for a great marriage and a great relationship. And uh, yeah, that spoke to me a long time ago. And it, yeah, it still speaks to me. Great, Ray. Thank you so much for your time and really appreciate it. Really enjoyed your film as well. Hey, thank you so much, Greg.